All right, this is the video recording for geometry. We're doing the practice test three. Practice test and the test for this year, 2023, are exactly the same. Let's you go ahead and dive into this uh, practice test. There are gonna be 18 questions, as you can see already. And I'm gonna be putting the points in the very front once I grade everything. Let's see how fast we can get through everything while still explaining it decently well. Number one, equilateral triangle. The general idea behind the equilateral triangle is you're gonna measure the distance between A and B with your compass. So I'm gonna make this measurement the same length as AB. You can see it is now exactly the same length as AB. You can make a tick mark up here, switch the metal tip to A instead of B, make a tick mark out here. That intersection, we're gonna be using a straight edge and we are going to be connecting A to this intersection. So bend down, move here and we connect intersection to B. Oop, they hit my finger. So there's a little bit of a, a dip up there. But yep, yeah, there's gonna be the equilateral triangle. We need a regular hexagon with radius AB, which means I'm going to have my compass measure from A to B. So I'm gonna make this slightly smaller with my compass. Once A to B has been measured, like so, then I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm kind of lazy in my circles, um, and I move the paper instead of the compass because it goes a little bit faster for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the entire circle. There we go. And from there, I'm going to use B. You don't have to, but I'm going to use B um, and I'm going to mark out equal segments uh, using that same length of the radius. So I have an intersection here, move the tip over here, intersection, move the tip to the new intersection. And you keep going around this and eventually it'll end up right back where you started with six equally spaced points. You can see that B also has a mark right through it. We're gonna connect each of these intersections with our straight edge to make straight lines. One, two, three, four, five, and so there is our hexagon with six sides. All right, moving on to number three. You need a perpendicular bisector. Make sure that your compass is at least more than halfway. Halfway would be right about here, so I'm a little bit more than halfway. We're gonna make a tick mark out here in empty space, out here in empty space. And then we're gonna move the metal tip from B to A. Being very precise with the placement of the metal tip. Intersection, intersection. And we just connect the two intersections with a line using our straight edge. So we move it there. And there's our perpendicular bisector. Excellent. Now we need to do an angle bisector. Again, it doesn't really matter what length I choose, but it needs to, we need to make sure that we have an equal distant, um, or I guess this length and this length need to be the same. I tried to trick you making this one slightly the same size as this one, but I'm not gonna be fooled by that. I'm gonna make this cut off to be the exact same length. So I'm going to cut it off there and cut it off down there. So both of these are the same distance. And then from there, it doesn't matter what length you use, but the next two distances have to be the same. I'm going to mark a point out in space, mark this arc out in empty space. And that intersection is going to be the, the line which I, or the ray that I draw through. So there's the, the line that will um, bisect the angle. Moving on to number five. Now, number five, we're constructing a perpendicular line to L. Both uh, five and six, you need to extend this line. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend both these lines right now. So again, you just put your straight edge on this line and extend this line out. And same thing on uh, this problem down here, we're gonna extend this line out to the right so that we can actually use the line. Let me make sure that it actually lines up too. All right, so I've extended both of these lines. Uh, on this line up here, there's A. I just need to cut the line into a line segment. It doesn't matter how big I do that. I'm just gonna use the last measurement that I had. So I'm gonna cut it into the left part over here, right part over here. So now these, uh, uh, this is a line segment. If I cut it off, I'm gonna do a perpendicular bisector of this line segment. So many people make the mistake of not changing their compass here, and they try to do a perpendicular bisector right here. This is halfway, it needs to be more than halfway um, so I'm just gonna extend my compass just a tad bit, so it's a little bit more than halfway, it's out here. 
And I'm going to do line up here, line down here, move the metal tip to the other intersection, my cutoff line segment, intersection, intersection, and these two intersections we're going to make a line. There's my perpendicular line that goes through A. Kind of similar down to here. Um, I'm going to cut a line segment down here. The way that I do that is any line segment will do. Um, any, any size for the compass as long as it cuts into a line segment. So I'll show you this right here is a perfect length, uh, length because it cuts it once and then twice. But if I were to uh, make this too small, now this compass doesn't intersect anywhere. So you need to make it long enough that it actually touches the line twice. So once and twice. So you can see the two intersections. And you don't even have to change the length of the compass. You can just put them on the new intersection and have a line segment down there. Or an arc down here and an arc down here. And that intersection will go to A and make a right angle. Notice that you don't have to do this one, but you could. If I come back here, I could do an intersection up through A, come back to the other intersection and go through A. You don't need this other intersection because you already know where A is. So you can just connect A to this intersection over here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Say, so, okay, there's my 90 degree angle that goes through the line. And it had to be extended, so that was a little bit of a trick. It is a line, though. Line L. So lines go on forever and ever. You can extend it as long as you'd like. Um, I'm on to number seven, so I have to copy this angle. The way that we copy the angle is again, we need to cut this segment and this segment into equal pieces. That's always the first step to do whenever you have some sort of angle. So let's make sure that I have the correct length here. Okay, this length looks good to me, so I'll do that length right there, that length right there. And that's going to be the length that I'm going to also preserve over here. So I'm going to put my metal tip on the very edge of this line and have that. Uh, cut correctly. And I don't know if I need more of an arc, so I'm going to go ahead and extend this arc a little bit more. Um, and just for the sake of showing that there's two arcs that are the same length, I'm going to get my metal tip in the right spot here. Oh, whoa, you can see that one didn't line up perfectly. I must have moved when I cut this off a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this line down here. I made a mistake. I need to make sure that I'm very precise with the metal tip of my compass. It has to go right on that intersection. There it goes. Okay. So these two arcs are the same length arc, and what I need to do now is I need, just need to measure how far away these intersections are each other and copy that angle over here. So now I'm going to put the metal tip on this intersection. Obviously, I'm not measuring the right amount, so I'm going to change my compass to be the exact right amount. You can see that it goes through right here. I'm just going to move the metal tip over to this intersection right here and find where that matching intersection up here. So that's the matching intersection, like that is the matching intersection. So I'm going to draw a ray from our point to this intersection, and I'll have a matching angle. There we go. This angle and this angle are now congruent um, just by construction. Number eight, we're doing a square. So the way that we do a square is we're going to extend line AB to be pretty long. So let's see if I can match this up correctly. Make sure it's actually the same exact slope as the previous line. Okay, so I extended line AB. I can still see where B ends. It ends right here. I don't know if you can see that on the video. Um, and what I'm going to do is I need to find any any perpendicular line that goes through B. So this is very similar to the construction that we did all the way back over on five. We're doing a perpendicular line through a point. We're doing a perpendicular line through a point. So in this case, I'm just going to cut off a line segment. It doesn't matter how big I do that. I'm just going to make it nice and tiny so it doesn't take up too much room. So cut off a line segment on the left. And I'm going to cut off a line segment to the right. You can see with this line segment, I'm just going to do a perpendicular bisector. I just need a, a right angle. That's what I'm asking for. So again, many people make a mistake of saying, okay, that's good, and they'll draw the line through B. But what they really need to do is they need to extend the compass just a tad so it goes a little bit more than B, and then you're going to do your perpendicular bisector. So line here, line here. I should say arc. Line talks about the straight line. And then intersection and intersection with the arc. If I connect these two intersections, that should be a right angle. And we want this line to be way too long. So I'm going to make this line too long. All I was after was a 90 degree angle here. So I have a 90 degree angle, and it went through B, and I made this line way too long. It goes on forever and ever. And what I need to do now is make sure that I have a square. So this length and this length now need to match. The way that we match lengths is with the compass. So I get my compass, and I measure between uh, B and A. Or a and B, it doesn't matter. Make sure I have that length stored on my compass. And there's that length right there. And then we're going to cut this line or this ray into the correct segment. So I'm going to cut it off using the compass and say, hey, that's where I intersect. And then finally, we need this, this fourth intersection up here. The way that we do that is using the compass. We can put the metal tip over here on A. 
make it an arc. Metal tip up here on this new intersection, make an arc, and that'll be the fourth corner of our square. We just need to connect these four points. So there's first, and move my paper as fast as I'm moving my straight edge. And there is my square A, B, C, D, if I were to put those C, D. And notice that this square has to have the exact length of AB. I can't just have a Chinese square or a giant square. The AB needs to be the exact side of the square. I'm moving on to number nine. On number nine, I have to divide um, AB into five equal pieces. So the way that we do that is we draw a random angle at the side. We're just going to copy that angle. So I'm going to choose a random angle and ask it to go through A. So I'm just going to choose that angle right there. So there's my random angle. And I know I'm gonna have five equal pieces, so I need to make sure that this length of my compass, I can put five of these up here. Right now, that's way too big. Usually, you're supposed to go pretty darn small here. So I think this length right here, I can fit five of this length on this line. I hope I can, at least. So let's go ahead and count them. So I've turned this upside down. I apologize that I've turned this so much, but this is how I go fast. So I'm putting it right on A. There's the first intersection. Move it to this next intersection. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So I have all five of these ready to go. And I, I have to have this arc extended, so I, I forgot to do that. I'm gonna come back down here. I'm gonna extend that line all the way down here. And then I'm gonna copy an angle. So the way that I copy the angle is I'm going to have this same measurement and I'm gonna put it around B over here. So same measurement around B. And I know the line's gonna come out down here somewhere. So I'm gonna make an arc down in the area that I'm gonna be finding. And again, the way that you copy an angle is once you have the same length here and here, so this length and this length, what I need now is the length in between those two intersections. So I'm gonna put my metal tip on this first intersection down here, and I'm gonna change the compass until I measure the distance between these two points. So measuring the distance, measuring the distance, and there it is. I have the exact distance measured here, and I'm gonna move this distance over um, to this intersection. Again, this intersection, this intersection, this intersection, and this soon to found this, or intersection over here. So I'm Middle tip right here, find the intersection. And there's my intersection, and I'm gonna have a line, or actually a ray that comes out through B and that intersection. So from B, through the intersection, as long as I can. And right there. Um, you'll know that you're correct if these two lines are parallel, meaning that if you extend them out towards infinity, they will never cross each other. You can see that these will stay the same distance no matter how far I go. That's one of the things I'm checking on the test is to make sure that these two lines are parallel. If they aren't, you did an incorrect angle copy down here. And then I'm gonna come back and grab that same length that I did over here and copy that five times. So I'm gonna come back and measure the distance between A and that first line, which was right there. Okay, so I have that distance again on my compass and it should match with this one. It does, you can see it matches with the first distance and then I'm gonna do that four more times. So that's one, and then two, three, four, five, and then I just need to connect these ones. And this is where a lot of students make a mistake. They randomly think that this intersection goes to this intersection, that is incorrect. It goes from this intersection through A, because essentially you're making this um, parallelogram. So here's the first intersection that you don't really need because it doesn't cut the line. The first line should never actually cut through line AB. And then now I'm gonna be matching my intersections up here. So I'm gonna match this intersection with our intersection down here. And each of these lines, if you're doing this correctly, they should all be parallel, meaning they don't run into each other. Let's see if they all look parallel by the very end of this. And then your very final line, you won't really need, but there it is. And you can see that I've cut this into five equal pieces. You can just count one, two, three, four, five equal pieces. All right, We're, and again, I'm kind of ignoring everything else. I'm just looking at this line AB. Moving on to number 10. We're over halfway done, or we are now halfway done. We're gonna make a pentagon with radius AB. So if the radius is AB, let's go ahead and make this into a circle, and then we'll keep making our pentagon. So I'm going to move the paper so I can go faster. I'm going to use my compass to measure out this radius AB on my compass. It's kind of large. And you just be careful. Okay, so there's my circle. I move the paper instead of the compass because it tends to go faster. And there's my circle that goes with the radius of AB. And then from here, I need to do the following thing. I'm gonna pretend that B is the, the top of my um, 
pentagon. So I'm going to turn my paper sideways and I'm going to do it from here. I usually like the, the top to be my starting point. Um, if I make a line segment that goes through B and A, that is the diameter, I'm going to keep it on the inside of the circle. What I need to do now is I need a 90 degree perpendicular bisector. So I can't just eyeball it. I will take a point off if you eyeball it. You need to do a, a perpendicular bisector. So the way that you do that is you make a, um, from B to this unknown point, that's the line segment that we are perpendicular bisectoring. So we need to go at least uh, to A and then a little bit more through A. So I'm gonna make this a little bit longer. So now it's a little bit longer than A. And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna make an intersection up here, down here. I'm gonna move my metal tip over here to the other point. And intersection, intersection. There's gonna be my perpendicular line. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my compass, or sorry, my straight edge to make this line. And again, this is another diameter that is now a 90 degree intersection. So again, that, that was the top of my circle. There's my 90 degree intersection. In fact, I don't actually, I could pretend that this is now the top of my circle because I can turn it sideways. So I'm gonna do it from here on. Um, what I need to do now is I need to find the middle between A and this intersection on the left. So what is the middle of this section? And to do that, you need another perpendicular bisector between A and let's call this point C. So perpendicular bisector AC. The way that I do that is I'm going to measure the distance between A and it needs to be at least halfway. I'm just gonna make it the exact radius because I think that'll be useful for later. So if I make this arc from AC and I use the same exact radius, boom, it's already the circle. I've already made the circle, right? Now I'm gonna do it around C and it should intersect my circle uh, once and twice. And if I connect this intersection to this intersection, that will be a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to make this with my straight edge. I'm not gonna draw the entire line, I'm just after this mid segment. So I just drew this line right here. That is exactly halfway between A and C. Now with my compass, I'm going to measure the distance between this point, which I'm gonna call D. I wanna find the distance between D and C. So I'm gonna use my compass, putting the metal tip on D, changing the compass length to be a little bit smaller here. And I have it on C, and then I'm gonna make this circle that hopefully should fit perfectly between um, A and C, and it, it's close-ish. I'm off by a little bit. I think I need to make this slightly smaller. Okay, there we go. Again, when I make my circles, I like to move my paper, so I move everything out of the way, and here comes my circle. Hopefully it's gonna stay on here. Okay, you can see that perfect, that circle is pretty darn near perfect. It intersected A and C perfectly. Um, the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to draw a line that connects uh, the point down here, which I'm gonna call E. We're gonna connect uh, E to D, and then we're gonna make the line that goes and it intersects the circle twice. So line segment DE. Like so, and then there's my core that is within the circle. And the important points here are F and G. F is this intersection with the circle line. G is this intersection with the circle line. I'm going to measure with my compass the distance between E and F. So I'm gonna measure between E and F. And I'm going to draw um, an arc um, over here that intersects the circle and the circle over here on the left is or on the right side as well. Those two points are gonna be pieces of my pentagon. And then finally, I'm going to measure the distance between E and G. So make my compass quite a bit bigger. Come on, compass. Between E and G, which I can barely do. Okay, you can see that I have E and G measured, and then I'm gonna make an arc that goes through the circle and then all the way to the other side as well. So what I'm after is um, I'm going to call this point one up here, this point two, three, four, and five. I'm going to connect one, two, three, four, five, and that will be my pentagon. So let me do that really quickly with my straight edge. One connects to two. Two connects to three. Three connects to four. Four to five. And finally, five to six to finish my pentagon. And there it is, our finished pentagon. I mean, it's a little bit messy, but you can see the outline of my pentagon. Moving on to number 11. 
we need the circumcircle. So it's a circle that's going to go around the triangle and it's going to go through points C, B, and A. The way that you do that is with perpendicular bisectors. You need two and you can check your work with the third. I'm only going to do the two because I'm going to go nice and fast in this video. So I'm going to do a perpendicular bisector of AC. So I'm going to put my metal tip on C and I'm going to make my compass at least halfway, which is it's way too big right now, so I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So I think that way is about halfway. Oops, I made some marks uh, right here. I'm going to erase them. A little bit of an accident. So at least halfway between C and A to make a mark. And then move the metal tip to A at the same distance between A and C. And then I'm going to mark uh, the perpendicular bisector by drawing this line with a straight edge. And there we go. I'm going to make this line way too big. It's going to go through the triangle. There's my perpendicular bisector. We need one other perpendicular bisector. I'm going to do the perpendicular bisector of AB. I'm going to keep the same length because I think it's at least halfway. So this is, if I put the metal tip on A, you can see that this is clearly at least halfway. So my first arc looks like that. And my second arc, when I put it on B, I'm going to intersect once and twice. And I'm going to make my perpendicular bisector by connecting these two intersections. There we go. These two lines intersect right there. So I'm going to label my circum, well, my circum circle is going to be centered here. Now I'm going to measure the distance between this point and A, B, or C, it doesn't matter. It's the same distance between all of them. So I'm gonna measure between this point and A. By the way, this is called the, um, the circum center that I've down right here. If I measure between the circum center and A, that should be the same as the circum center to B, the same as the circum center to C, and indeed it is. I'm gonna clear out all my materials that way so I can make my circle. Here it comes. And there is my certain circle that I'm looking for. So as I'm doing this practice test, I'm recognizing, oh look, my circle goes through the I of in circle, which means that if you're checking your work on your actual test, make sure your circle goes through the I of circle. All right, so from there, I'm doing the in circle for number 12 of ABC. The in circle is not made with perpendicular bisectors, it's made with angle bisectors. The way that you make angle bisectors, I'm gonna change this to a slightly smaller length, is we make uh, we, we cut the angle into equal parts, so I'm going to cut this angle right there. And then I'm going to find, um, I'm just going to use the same length again, using these two intersections as the center of my arc. So center of my arc out here in the center space, center of my arc out here. If I connect C to this intersection, that's going to be my angle bisector. So between C and this intersection out here, that's going to be my angle bisector. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's do it for A. So if I do A, I'm going to have, I'm just going to use the same length because it doesn't really matter the length for when you're doing angle bisectors. So I'm going to say, I'm going to cut this length off here and here. And then these are the two new intersections that I'm going to be using for my center of my arcs. So using this point right here, I'm going to have some arc out here. Using this intersection over here, I'm going to have an arc out here. This intersection in A will make my angle bisector. So this point right here to this intersection is my angle bisector. And this point that these lines cross right here is going to be my in-center. Now I need to find how to get from the in-center to a random other point. So what I'm going to do is I need to make an altitude through this in-center. The way that you do that is you grab your compass, you put the center on this in-center, and then we need to make two intersections on a random other line segment. I'm going to choose uh, BC, so I'm going to have these two points here and here. As long as I have a perpendicular bisector between those two points, I'm ready to go. So I'm just gonna not even change the compass length, have an intersection out here, move to the other intersection, intersection out here. This intersection to this point will be the perpendicular bisector. I only care about the line segment underneath this uh, that intersects BC. So I'm going to uh, measure between my in center and this intersection with my straight edge. And this intersection down here, which I'm gonna call D, is super important. This letter D, it's the one on the left, not the right, is the one that I'm gonna to use to find the, the length of my circle. So if I've done everything correctly, which uh, I was going fast, but I'm gonna measure between this in center and D, and that should in theory be the radius of my circle. Let's go ahead and test. Let's eyeball this, ooh, I'm a little bit off. Let's see, ooh, I'm kind of a lot off right there. I think it's because my metal tip is not quite in the right spot. Let's see here. Oh yeah, it's a little bit too big on all sides. So that's on this end, inside. That's on the inside. Again, it's a little bit off still. All right, so I think this is as close as I can get. Let's go ahead and attempt what I've got. 
ooh, that was pretty decent. Um, you can see that if I zoom in with my uh, camera, it was a little bit off on this bottom segment down here. It went a little bit over. Um, if I did this on the test, because I am going faster right now, and I'm using a pen that is much thicker than a pencil that I would actually use, um, I'll probably take out half a point for over um, going over that line that much. All right. Um, I think this just came from speed and too thick of a, a pen. It's 0.7. I was pressing down kind of hard. Moving on to number 13. Number 13, we're trying to find the centroid. The centroid is made by medians. And to find a median, you first do a perpendicular bisector. So to do a perpendicular bisector, make sure that you have a compass that's at least half of the distance. So I'm going to increase this quite a bit. That should be good enough, I think. So let's check between C and A. Is this at least halfway? It does look like it's at least halfway. Make arc up there, arc down here. And then we move to A. Make arc and arc, and we're gonna again. I only care about where the midpoint between A and C is. I'm not gonna make this giant line here because this might be confusing for me. I'm simply gonna use my straight edge, connect these two intersections, and I'm only gonna make this tiny little tick mark one spot right here. I'm gonna connect this tick mark to the uh, the vertex B, and that's gonna be my first of my two medians. So there's my first median, and then I'm gonna do the same process again. So I don't know. Let's go ahead and find where BC has a midpoint. So again, I'm going to do a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to make an arc around C, which I already have. Um, and then I'm going to do an arc around B. And that will intersect once and twice. Oh, wow. Almost right on that line over there. I'm going to connect these two points uh, with my straight edge. I'm not going to draw that full line because I think that would be confusing. I'm going to make just this tick mark right in the center to say, hey, that was the midpoint between A or B and C. And I'm going to connect that midpoint to A. Make this midpoint to A. And that is my other median, which means this point right here is the centroid. So you somehow need to circle it like I did. Maybe say that the centroid, you can draw an arrow to it. Somehow say that is the centroid, and this should be the center balance. So the way that I'm eyeballing this, if I were to put my finger on this to balance the, the triangle, would it balance the triangle? And it does look like that would balance the triangle. Number 14 is the orthocenter. This is useful for finding areas. Let's go ahead and do orthocenter. So the easiest way to do orthocenter for number 14 is start with the obtuse angle. If you have any obtuse angle, start there. Put the middle tip on B, and we need to have this, uh, this arc intersect A, C at least twice. So this is too big. I'm gonna make this slightly smaller. Okay, this will intersect it twice, I believe. So it's gonna intersect once there, once there. You can see the two intersections. And then I'm going to have at the same, using the same measurement, I'm going to come out here in free space. Same measurement out in free space. Same measurement out in free space. And this uh, will be um, a perpendicular line that goes through B. Um, we won't cut A and C in half. It's not supposed to. It's just supposed to make a right angle and go through B. So from B to this intersection. And we want this line to go kind of a long distance. So there is a, again, the whole point of this is it's a, a right angle down here and it goes through B. We also need a right angle that goes through either A or C. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna choose it to go through A, which means I need this line BC to be much longer. That way I can intersect the line once and twice. So let me extend BC so I can actually have two different intersections. So I'm extending this line uh, BC, which happened to go through that intersection. That wasn't planned, it just I was extending the line. And then from here, I'm going to put my metal tip of my compass on A and intersect my, well, my extended line at least twice. So I'm putting the metal tip of my compass on A, and this is not big enough right now. You can see it's not big enough. I need to extend my compass a little bit larger, and I want to intersect once and twice. So you can see my two different intersections that I have. And then from there, I'm going to move the metal tip to those intersections and make intersections out in free space, move to the intersection, out in free space, and if I connect this intersection to A, I should have a right angle to this extended line BC. So I'm going to draw this line, and you can see that does look like a right angle right here to this uh, extended line. And notice that my my two different lines they come out and they intersect out here, right here, and that's going to be my my ortho center. So I'll say that my ortho center. I'll label that. It's right. Here. And moving on to number 15. Number 15, we're trying to find the diameter. The diameter is like a two step construction. First, make any random chord. I'm just going to draw this length right here. A chord is just a line segment that's in the center of the circle. 
just do a perpendicular bisector and we're done. So a perpendicular bisector, make sure that we measure at least half a distance, that is clearly at least half a distance, make an arc above and below, change the metal tip to the other side, make the mark for our intersection. If we connect these two intersections, that will be our diameter. So connecting these two intersections with our line will give us the diameter. So there's the diameter of our circle. And number 16, we need to find the center of the arc, which is essentially doing what we just did up here, but doing it two times on this arc. And my pro tip for you guys is make the arc as high as possible and as low as possible, and generally as small as possible. Not, not too small, but like a, not like the entire thing, otherwise it's gonna be hard. So I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna draw one cord up here, and I'm gonna draw another cord down here. So I have my two different cords. They don't have to be the same length. This one is small, that one is large. It doesn't matter. In theory, if I have a perpendicular bisector and a perpendicular bisector, they'll intersect each other somewhere out here. That'll be the center of the arc. So just do a perpendicular bisector. Make sure that you have a distance on your compass that is at least more than halfway. Indeed, I do. And I'm going to do an arc and an arc, and then move the metal tip to the other side of my cord. Intersection, intersection, and I'm going to connect these two intersections with a line that extends all the way out to where I guessing that the center of my arc is going to be. So if I draw my line through those points to let Mr. Snell know what I was doing, there's my line. And then I need to do the same thing down here. So again, I don't really need to change the length of my compass because I'm at least more than halfway. So this is way more than halfway, but that's okay. Draw an arc out here. And ooh, this arc might go off the paper. Maybe I do need a smaller length. Let me just see if this one is still on the paper. Uh, it is off the paper. Okay, so let me do a smaller length be much smaller. Oh, that might not be halfway though. I need to make sure that I'm at least halfway, so slightly larger. Okay, this one won't go off the paper, so I'm gonna do an arc right here, and then I'm gonna move to the other side of my cord and do an intersection, intersection. These two intersections will give me my, my next line. And if I connect these two with a straight edge, I can see there's my perpendicular bisector, and these two lines extend all the way out here. So there's the center of my arc. So the center of the following arc is right there. Excellent. All right, moving on to number 17. Second last question. Find the foci of the following ellipse by construction. So the way that you do this one, this one is a pretty quick step. Um, you're gonna measure between the center and the longest radius, radius, I was about to say radii. Just measure the major, uh, the major length, I think. I'm trying to remember the vocab term, but as long as you have this major length measured, you move the metal tip up to the uh, shorter one, and you just do an arc once, and twice, and done. Those are the foci. So the foci are there and there. It was not easy. And then number 18 is probably one of the hardest ones on everything. Number 18 is use tape and string to construct lips and labor your foci A and B. I need to run and get some tape real quick to come out. I will be providing tape on the test as well. And notice that I didn't mark any of the foci. Now you can change your foci to be whatever you would like. So I have my tape um, and I need to cut some string because someone stole my string. No, no, who did that? I'm grabbing some scissors here real quick. All right, I'm gonna pull off some string here. It doesn't need to be super long, so this length should be more than enough. And then essentially I just need to tape down the string with some wiggle room anywhere to my paper. So if I grab some tape, I'm just gonna randomly tape you right here. Don't let the string um, slip out of there. So I'm pressing, pressing really hard so the string doesn't come out of the tape. And I want some wiggle room, so right about there is enough wiggle room. I'm gonna tape up here kind of randomly. Just make sure that it doesn't wiggle at all. So I'm tape right about there. And I'm pressing down super duper hard on either side of the tape. And in theory, with all this wiggle room, this will be the ellipse. And my ellipse is, yeah, I think it's ready to go. So my tape's ready. Essentially what I do is I take um, my pencil or my pen and I just pull the string nice and taut and while keeping solid tension, oh, my, my paper uh, moved there. So I need to hold up here so my paper doesn't move. Try that again. Um, once you get about halfway down here, stop and then switch your pen to the other side 
We're going to pull it again nice and tight. Always keeping consistent tension, folding down the paper so it doesn't accidentally fold. Okay, you can see up here I'm, I'm more than halfway, so I'm going to stop and pull my pen to the other side. And keeping my, my string nice and tight, keep pulling. Oop, I hit the string up there, I'm just going to go back over you. Coming all the way back to where I started. So you can see it doesn't match up perfectly over here, but it's pretty darn close. I don't know if I can zoom out so you can see that the entire lips. But there is my lips, and I'm going to clearly mark my foci. The foci are the piece right underneath the tape. I know that the tape is hard to see on the camera, but one of the points is right here. The other point is right there. And because this is the final test, we don't need this piece of string anymore. If this is the real test, you can just leave that string permanently attached, and you can see how to make that ellipse from there on. So that is the entire video for the uh, practice test number 13 for uh, geometry. We went through all 18 of those constructions. Thank you for watching.